or we're joined by Brandon Wales. He's acting director of the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, better known as CISA. Director, welcome. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Are you surprised at what Lisa Monaco told Eamon that she doesn't know whether JBS paid a ransom? You know, I, I'm I'm not surprised. Uh, these are these are companies making uh, decisions about what they think is in their best interests. We've long argued that paying ransom is is not in the interest of our of our security, um, and that uh, when companies decide to pay ransom, they are feeding the business model uh, of ransomware, and and that is one of the reasons why we have seen ransomware surge over the last 18 months. But shouldn't the Justice Department know? whether the company actually paid a ransom or not. And do you know? Uh, I do not know. And, and I, I think uh, the deputy attorney general was very clear that uh, that they do need to know. Uh, it's important for the government to understand when these ransoms are being paid and to who, uh, because that actually enables uh, the, the government to, to follow the money, to potentially take action, to, to begin to find uh, these, these criminals where they are. What does this say, though, about what role the government is playing in helping our companies, our vital companies like JBS is, fight these hackers off. So, uh, you know, one of the reasons why Congress created CISA was to help companies. Um, but if, if, the, if the, uh, the real battle against ransomware doesn't start the day you've been hit by ransomware, it's going to start in the months ahead of time uh, where companies need to take the kind of action to improve their security to get security plans in place, to get response plans in place, to make sure that their systems are, are backed up appropriately, to make sure that their systems are hardened. That's when the real battle against ransomware actually begins. Um, and that's where I think the government is, is poised um, and continues to work with, uh, with industry and our critical infrastructure across the country to do that. But who has more of a responsibility? Most of the guests who have come on, and I know that Eamon has talked to as well, say this is a, a national security issue. So shouldn't the government be playing a bigger role along with these companies or at least helping them out perhaps more than they currently are in this fight? So I, this is absolutely a shared responsibility. The government does have a role to play. Um, we do a lot of work to provide uh, information to help enable uh, companies to deploy the right type of security. Uh, we do provide assistance uh, when there are cyber incidents that affect them. Uh, but ultimately for private sector companies, they need to understand the level of threat and risk that they face. Um, and I think if anyone, if any CEO out there doesn't understand that risk, the last month uh, should have been a wake up call to all of them um, that the government is here to help, but there is a responsibility that they, that they must shoulder uh, to make sure that their systems are protected. Eamon is, is still with us, uh, Director, as I mentioned. It, it is a tough question, Eamon, as to whether these companies should pay up or hold out. Yeah, and, and Scott, if you don't mind, I've got a question for Brandon, which is this, which is uh, why would a company that has been hit as badly as JBS was hit and who impacts the, the American food supply to such an extent as we saw this week, what reason would they have for not sharing whether or not they paid a ransom with the federal government? I mean, you know, I think that that's going to be ultimately a, a decision that every company has to make. Uh, there are obvious concerns about, you know, a, a company that is just paying potentially millions of dollars to a criminal organization that will weigh heavy on that company and whether they want that information to be shared. Eamon, you got to the, right. the issue, and, too, and, with, with Lisa Monaco as to whether these hackers were working in concert with a, a foreign adversary or simply with the blessing of. Yeah, that's right. I asked her directly if the hackers are working for Vladimir Putin or if they're just working uh, at the under the auspices of Vladimir Putin, who's taking a hands off approach to this sort of Wild West criminal behavior. She didn't really say whether or not the U.S. government knows what, what to what extent Vladimir Putin is orchestrating this. But she said in either case, you know, we're dealing with a country there that is harboring uh, these gangsters. And these gangsters are taking American companies hostage and stealing millions of dollars. And, and that's just a fundamental national security problem for the United States. And it's a business problem for corporate America. Director, how would you address that, that issue? So that, that's an important question for kind of our law enforcement community, uh, like the FBI, um, like the Justice Department, like the Secret Service uh, here at the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, and it's also a diplomatic challenge. It is no surprise that criminal operators um, uh, 
execute their attacks from permissive environments. They're going to operate from places uh, that are not cooperating with the United States law enforcement community. Um, and it's going to raise the burden on the government to see what it can do uh, to bring these people to justice uh, and to, to change the calculus for those countries uh, that are uh, allowing these operators to, to, uh, to execute their attacks against the American people. I know Eamon has another question for you as well. Yeah, the other question I had is in terms of restoring service. When you get inside these companies, what percentage of companies actually have the backups to be able to restore the service without paying the ransom? And what percentage of the companies that you're dealing with are just at the mercy of these hackers at this point? You know, I mean, that's a really hard question to answer. You know, I think it's it's going to be a mixed bag, in part because ransomware knows no boundaries. There is no company um, uh, that is that is immune. There's no sector of the economy that is immune. We've seen big companies and small multinational corporations and small nonprofits being affected by this. Um, and so it is important that every company be prepared because we don't know who's going to be next.